Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The B-52 Stratofortress is a long-range strategic bomber first introduced to the United States military in the 1950s. Over the years, this large-scale subsonic craft has performed a wide range of missions in theaters ranging from Vietnam to Iraq. Though primarily designed as a heavy bomber, the 159-foot-long B-52 has also been used for reconnaissance, electronic warfare, and aerial refueling. The B-52 weighs 185,000 pounds empty and has a max takeoff weight of 488,000 pounds. To accomplish this, it necessitates the use of eight engines arranged in four pods under the wings. The original engines were Pratt & Whitney J57 turbojets, which were later replaced with more powerful Pratt & Whitney TF33 turbofans. Over the years, the B-52 has undergone numerous upgrades and modifications, all of which require frequent maintenance. Aside from the age of many components, the B-52 is also a high-altitude bomber, reaching heights of around 50,000 feet. This puts additional stress on the aircraft and increases the need for what's known as phase maintenance. This refers to any structured maintenance program designed to ensure the continued airworthiness of the aircraft throughout its service life. It generally consists of a series of scheduled inspections, checks, and other tasks that must take place at given intervals. Typically, this is accomplished in massive hangars where all the necessary equipment is ready. Given the B-52's incredible 185-foot wingspan, not many planes are suitable for this type of work. There are four phases to the B-52 phase maintenance. In phase one, which is performed roughly every 180 flying hours, technicians will replace engine oil and filters, inspect the landing gear, and check for any worn or damaged components. In phase two, maintenance crews will conduct more in-depth inspections of the B-52's fuel systems, hydraulics, and flight controls. The same goes for phase three, which often includes non-destructive inspection and testing of the plane's thousands of parts. Thanks to huge improvements in technology, these maintenance teams can identify cracks and strains in parts that would otherwise be invisible to the naked eye. This is done by magnetizing the various components and then using a black light to investigate each part. This process is instrumental in determining whether a part will fail in the near future. Thanks to this magnetic inspection process, even the smallest components can be repaired or replaced before they have a chance to fail in midair. 
That's it. And then we'll clean it off and call it crap. Again, Phase 3 focuses a lot on the various engine and landing gear components, but it also includes a detailed examination of the B-52's airframe. This includes looking at all the various substructures of the aircraft and checking for cracks, strains, or other signs of damage that need to be addressed. The teams also deal with corrosion, which is an increased problem for the B-52s due to the cold temperatures they encounter during high-altitude flights. Still, aerodynamics is fundamental, even for a big heavy plane like the B-52. Even small discrepancies in the plane's frame and surface can cause undue wear and tear on more important components and systems. Phase 4 is the most extensive level of maintenance. For B-52s, this process is performed roughly every 1,440 flight hours. This is when major systems are overhauled and replaced. However, after every phase, the plane will undergo a process known as a buff or battle utilized flight facilitator buff wash. During this detailed process, the plane is thoroughly cleaned using a combination of high-pressure water, detergents, and solvents. This process is typically carried out by a team of maintenance personnel who work to remove dirt, grime, and other contaminants that can accumulate on the aircraft's surface during flight. The buff wash also includes taking off all the panels and exterior components to check for less noticeable corrosion that can spread and cause big problems for the plane. The Strato Fortress's first flight was all the way back in 1952. However, the United States military still sees the plane as playing a vital role in future conflicts and peacekeeping efforts. As such, the organization has a long-running effort to upgrade the capabilities of the B-52 fleet. Not only do these efforts include modernizing a wide range of systems and components, but finding new ways to extend the service life as well. Much of this work is done at Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma. Here, planes are equipped with everything from new wings to new engines to the latest active electronically scanned array radar systems. Tinker Air Force Base is one of the largest facilities of its type in the world. It covers over 4,000 acres and employs more than 26,000 civilian and military employees. The primary unit working on the B-52 modernization project is the Air Force Sustainment Center, which is responsible for sustaining and modifying aircraft and weapon systems. One of the most significant upgrades in the modernization program is the installation of a new communications array. 
This will enable B-52 crews to send and receive information via satellite links, allowing them to change mission plans and retarget weapons while in flight. Also, I can add those OAPs. This is significant because so many of the ship's systems are still constructed around analog. In 2022, the 49th Test and Evaluation Squadron initiated the first air demonstration utilizing a BLOSS communication system paired with an Iridium Certus terminal. BLOSS stands for Beyond the Line of Sight and essentially means that the B-52's crew can communicate with any source anywhere in the world. Currently, the modernization program is expected to continue for several more years. The program's ultimate goal is to keep the B-52 in service until at least 2050. If that happens, it will be the longest serving aircraft in the history of the United States Air Force with an operational background of just under a century. The B-52 has expanded from a standard bomber into a multi-purpose weapons platform. In the future, the U.S. military hopes to further enhance the plane's attack capabilities by equipping it with new, more modern munitions. For example, many B-52s have already been equipped with the conventional rotary launcher. This system allows the plane to switch between types of bombs at the touch of a button. But more weapons upgrades are also in the works. This procedure is known as a store separation test. It uses a B-52 model placed upside down in a wind tunnel to see if the aircraft can safely release its weapons, external fuel tanks, and other stores without endangering the aircraft or its crew. During a store separation test, the aircraft will typically release a variety of simulated weapons or stores. As weapons release can sometimes interfere with an aircraft's stability, aerodynamics, or avionics systems, these tests are necessary to determine which munitions the B-52 might be able to carry in the future. In the early 2000s, the B-52 was selected as the preferred launching platform for the AGM-86B air-launched cruise missile. This subsonic missile is 20 feet long and weighs more than 3,000 pounds. Most importantly, it boasts a range of over 1,500 miles, which means it can strike targets deep in enemy territory, providing a serious strategic advantage. The AGM-86B also features a terrain contour matching guidance system, or TERCOM, which drastically increases the accuracy of the weapon using horizontal scans of the ground while in flight. Since the AGM-86B is a low-altitude missile, such a system is integral to its success. More recently, the B-52 was chosen as the launch platform for the Boeing X-51 Wave Rider. The X-51 is an experimental, unmanned, hypersonic aircraft designed to reach speeds of up to Mach 4.5. Theoretically, 
It could be designed to deliver military payloads at speeds that would make many enemy defense countermeasures useless. The project was part of a joint effort that involved the United States Air Force, Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, NASA, and Boeing. Though it was eventually canceled, it demonstrates that the B-52 still has a long service life ahead of it, regardless of what role the aircraft may take. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.